Welcome to Lost Inwood Panoramas, where in each episode we'll take a close look at an historic North Manhattan panoramic image. Thanks for joining me today. You've heard the saying, a picture is worth a thousand words. Well, the photo that we're going to look at today is simply one of the most glorious and significant historic images of North Manhattan that you are ever going to see. If it could speak, it could tell us a thousand stories. Taken from a high point near the top of Manhattan Island, before the subway was built, before the roads were completed, before the city arrived. And yet, the broad brush strokes of the neighborhood we know today as Inwood are already in place, and the shape of the land is comfortably familiar to those who know it. Mounted on black cardboard-like material, the 8x10 vintage print has some old handwritten text on the back. Let's see what it says. 80,000 horsepower station, Metropolitan Street Railway Company, Kingsbridge, New York. Street Railway Company, hmm. Is this then a picture of a streetcar power plant built before the subway arrived in Inwood? A quick consult with Google tells us that the Metropolitan Street Railway Company operated the Third Avenue Railway Co. between 1900 and 1912. Its Kingbridge powerhouse, seen here, opened in 1902. That's the same year that trolley tracks were completed between City Hall and 220th Street. At the time, this powerhouse was the largest of its kind. Well, 80,000 horsepower sure does seem like a lot. We don't know who the photographer was, but Kingsbridge drugstore owner and pharmacist Charles Buck published a slightly retouched version of the photo as a postcard to sell in his shop a few blocks to the north on Broadway. Its caption tells us the photographer's vantage point, the tower of Webb's Academy and home for shipbuilders in the Bronx, just a stone's throw across the river. Webb's Academy was completed in 1893 and located near today's corner of Sedgwick Avenue and Fordham Road. It's an easy landmark to spot from Inwood. At the time, the views possible from the top of its tower were the most expansive you could get north of High Bridge. As great as the image is, though, as a postcard, it's sort of a fail. I mean, sure, it conveys the big picture well enough, but the limitations of the commercial halftone printing process, you, you know, the dots you see when you look at a newspaper photo up close, they obliterate the fine details that the photo could reveal. Up close, it's kind of like when I take my glasses off. Nothing's in focus. A map view will give us a clearer idea of our vantage point here. The photographer is aiming the camera straight across the northern tip of Manhattan, sweeping across the Harlem River into Inwood, but also the Bronx neighborhood of Spite and Dival. You can see the Hudson River, too, and the New Jersey Palisades in the distance. Since the photo has so much to offer, let's start on the left side and get our bearings on the ground, so to speak. In the far distance, about two and a half miles away, are the New Jersey Palisades looming over the Hudson River. The distant, rounded landmass sloping down to the river is Inwood Hill. A bit closer, covered by darker trees, is the hillside where Isham Park and Park Terrace are today. In the foreground, we can spot the meadows and orchards that make up part of the Dykeman or Inwood Valley. And and in the front of that is the Harlem River shoreline. Kingsbridge Road, today's Broadway, is about the only improved roadway we can see. And that muddy excuse for a cross street is today's 215th Street. 10th Avenue intersects with Broadway in a tight V shape, just as it does today. 9th Avenue is there, barely, but mostly hidden behind the fruit trees to the left and a small hill to the right. Though it looks like the giant industrial structure is one big single thing, on this 1911 map, we can see that 9th Avenue goes right between two separate but related buildings, a powerhouse and a storage depot, both for the street railway. So what we've got is a power plant and a streetcar storage barn. Now let's have some fun flying around a bit and zoom in on places that look interesting. Check out the beautiful Seaman Drake Estate, built of marble in 1855 by John T. Seaman, who spent a fortune on it. At the time, locals called it Seaman's Folly for its sheer extravagance, which, by the way, included an imposing marble arch entry gate at 216th Street and Broadway. While the mansion was torn down in the late 1930s to build an apartment complex, the arch still survives, 
visible above the auto body repair shops that surround it. Off in the distance, we can just barely see the railroad bridge that crosses Spiten Devil Creek as it joins the Hudson River. At the time the photo was taken, the span had just recently been rebuilt as a swing bridge, and we can still see the old lift bridge tower that had previously allowed boat traffic to pass through. Let's test the limits of our zooming capability and get really close to the Seaman Mansion. It's remarkable. One can actually see the glassed-in sunroom, the octagon library behind it, the observation deck cupola, and the shaded back porch and driveway on the northeast side. Wow, it's amazing. Next, let's zoom in on the arch and see what's there. Oh, we can see a crew at work on 10th Avenue with several horses pulling their load of materials. We can see that the surface there has been built up above grade and that the side of the roadway is being lined with large rocks or paving stones. Along 215th Street, we see a couple or three newly built homes as well. Of course, they are all long gone. There are a few more things we need to check out before moving on. Let's move the camera south just a little bit. Yeah. Here, here's the tree-shaded Isham family estate. The circular driveway we see at the mansion's entrance is still on Park Terrace East, where it abuts Isham Park. You'd think of it today as a traffic circle instead of an old driveway. And way in the distance, atop in Wood Hill, we can see the summer home of none other than Isidore and Ida Strauss, owners of Macy's department store, who both died aboard the Titanic in 1912. They might have been out in their garden when the photo was taken. Uh, what else? Well, lots of super tall telephone or telegraph poles are lining Broadway, early signs of our coming hyper-connected world. And where the 215th Street steps today rise up to Park Terrace from Broadway, what well, looks like debris from one of the old marble quarries that used to be common up at this end of the island. As we zoom back out, we can see the old ferry landing along the Harlem Riverside. It was pictured in an 1860s Valentine's Manual, part of an engraving of the old Century House, which was an old home. It's just out of view here. Let's try to establish the date of this image. Uh, fortunately, two of the billboards lining the Harlem River shore that we can see are for Broadway shows, and theatrical events, with some notable exceptions, are usually pretty time-specific. A quick search tells me that both of these productions opened and closed in 1903, and with the subway opening in this neighborhood early in 1906 and building crews tearing up the area in 1905, it's probably safe to say that this image dates to the second half of 1903 or 1904 at the latest. Hey, check out the orchard. These fruit trees, which used to be so common in Inwood, are the remains of the Nagel Orchard, and they are only going to be around for another couple of years. It's the end of an era. Well, let's move the camera up a little bit and take a look at that street railway depot. This 19... 80s-ish photo shows the terracotta elements of the facade that are visible in the panorama. Now let's take a look behind the depot at some details in the distance. Just to the left of the powerhouse stacks, we can see the railroad cut on Spite and Dival side of the waterway. And since the late 1950s, that rock face has had a giant letter C painted on it by the Columbia crewing team. But not in 1903, it didn't. At the time this photo was taken, the front of the railroad cut still had a peninsula attached to it, where several iron processing plants were belching out sp smoke around a clock. A foundry, a rolling plant, maybe others. Here we can see one of the stacks rising above the tree line. Atop Spite and Hill, over a mile away, we can still see an amazing amount of detail. It's more built up than Inwood. A new Public School 24, and not far away from that, Puddler's Row, uh, named by the hundreds of workers employed at the iron factories who lived there. At the base of the hill, by Spite and Creek, is the old town of Spite and itself, a busy place then. It's almost all gone now. And look, it must be Sunday or something, because laundry is out on lines all over the place. There's something I've been really excited to show you in this image, and now it's time to do it. The big power plant was built to power streetcars. 
and service finally arrived in Inwood in May of 1902. It was a super exciting moment in the neighborhood. So many trolley enthusiasts arrived from downtown that they built temporary snack bars at the end of the line at 220th Street. And here we can actually see a streetcar pulling into a refreshment tent or terminus at the end of the line. Trolley service ran right up to the Ship Canal Bridge, which had been open for just a few years. It's been replaced a couple of times, and now we call it the Broadway Bridge. And then lastly, across the rerouted Spite and Dival Creek, they called the new waterway the Ship Canal, we see a huge cliff of Inwood marble delineating a new neighborhood which was created by its detachment from Manhattan, Marble Hill. There's a Metro North station there, cliffside, today. We haven't seen everything that there is to see in this photo, but this is a good place to stop for now. Let's zoom back out and pan slowly back to where we started. I'm going to stop talking and we can just drink in the history and the beauty of the image. That's great. And one final zoom out so that we can see the photo in its entirety. That was a great ride. Thanks for taking a close look at this great panoramic image with me. They say a picture is worth a thousand words, and we've gone over that by a bit. But it was for a worthy cause. Thanks, and see you next time.